it's all about the game, because he pretty much runs the company, and will do so until he's using that sledgehammer as a cane. Triple H rose from a ridiculous fop, to the biggest heel in the company, to the king of kings, to the heir to the company, using a strategy of guile, talent, and well-placed daughter husbandry. But his journey to the top was not without its stumbles. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 things WWE want you to forget about Triple H. Number 10, The Curtain Call, otherwise known as the Madison Square Garden incident. Now this seems positively tame today, but back in 1996, it was the equivalent of Triple H taking a dog-sized bowel movement on Vince's company, by which I mean the bowel movement was the size of a dog. Now the click was a backstage group. They were a cross between the Backstreet Boys and the Skull and Bones Club, made up of Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Triple H, x Buck, then the 123 Kid, and Shawn Michaels. They were a big group of influential bezies. On May 19th, 1996, at a house show in Madison Square Garden, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash were both resting their last matches for the company before leaving for WCW. Hall was wrestling Triple H, and Shawn was facing Nash in the main event. After that match, Scott Hall and Triple H joined Nash and Michaels in the ring, and the four embraced, completely breaking kayfabe, a cardinal sin, especially back in the 90s. Vince was furious that not only did the four men expose the business, but some fans had managed to tape them doing it. With Hall being gone and Michaels being champion, the punishment fell solely on Helmsley. He lost his planned King of the Ring victory to Steve Austin and wrestled jobbers for months. Naughty boys. Number 9. Being burned by his own entrance. Triple H's WrestleMania entrances have always had a touch of the extravagance about them. Most of them have been genuinely longer than other matches on the card. Some of them are good, like whenever Motorhead play live. Some of them are terrible, like this absolute travesty from WrestleMania 31, where Triple H appeared dressed as a grumpy toy, carrying a handful of stupid shrunken robot heads. But most embarrassing was his entrance at WrestleMania 29, when the game got second degree cold burns from his own special effects. He appeared inside a big skull fortress thing, bit dumb, and then he walked through the entrance through what he thought was a jet of smoke, was in actual fact dry ice. It coated the game's torso in the stuff whilst also horribly burning him. The internet didn't realise this and spent the entire time mocking the man because he looked like a frosted treat. Number 8. The Hog Pen Match. A Hog Pen Match is a wrestling match, repeat, wrestling match, when your opponent wins by throwing you into a hog pen. Wrestling match. There have been only two proper hog pen matches in WWE, I'm not counting the redneck triathlon, no one should count that for anything. One involved Vicky Guerrero, an untrained manager, and Santina Morella, a man dressed as a woman. The other one had Triple H in it. Illustrious company trips. He battled Henry O. Godwin, his initials were Hog, <laughs> During the match, Triple H got slop shoved in his face by a big hairy man, but he eventually won the match by throwing Godwin into the pen and probably frightening the pigs who had no idea what was happening. Then Triple H himself ended up covered in mud. Remember everybody, dignity is precious. And speaking of dignity, Number 7. His Movies Wow, Triple H is not The Rock. Aside from lending to his voice to a Scooby-Doo feature, Scooby-Doo WrestleMania Mystery, and cameoing in TV shows, Triple H has only got three movies under his belt, and they're all terrible. In two of these films, he plays a con coming out of prison. In The Chaperone, he plays Ray Ray Bradstone, who has to juggle chaperoning his estranged daughter's field trip with escaping from mobsters, which is about as funny as a killing field. Much more funny is the super serious crime drama Inside Out, where Triple H plays the personification of sadness inside the little girl's head. Oh, no, wait, no, no. He plays an ex-con who has to hang around with Michael Rappaport wearing a silly hat. Rappaport? Michael Rappaport. Rapportport. Repulled pork. Silly hat. And finally, Blade Trinity, the best film Triple H has made, which is like being the smartest Kardashian. Triple H is a vampire with a fat face and a tiny dog who can't beat Ryan Reynolds in a fight. A true trilogy of terrible. Number six, being crushed by the Ultimate Warrior. A hundred seconds. It took less than a hundred seconds for the Ultimate Warrior to crush his WrestleMania 12 opponent. Who was that nameless jobber? Well, he actually had three names. Hunter, Hurst, Helmsley. Triple H hit the warrior with a pedigree early in the match, which he immediately no-sold before casually removing his coat, then planting Helmsley with the splash. Warrior was fired a few months later for no-showing events, so this accomplished precisely nothing. So the next time you see the meme of Triple H with a shovel in his hand, just remember he's been on the wrong end of that spade in his own career. Number 5. His relationship with China. Triple H and Shawn Michaels brought China into the WWF after meeting her at a pro wrestling show in 1996. For years behind the scenes, Triple H was also in a relationship with China. However, he entered into another relationship with Stephanie McMahon and he and China broke up. However, the whole situation became incredibly messy. China claims that Triple H began seeing Stephanie whilst he and China were still together, and the two had a physical dispute when she confronted him about it, which Triple H steadfastly denies. 
China was fired from the company in 2001, not long after her relationship with Triple H came to an end, which seems especially cruel considering the problems China has had since leaving the company. It's a murky backstage issue, especially with Triple H saying on Austin's podcast that China is not being considered for the Hall of Fame, and the WWE would dearly like the whole matter to stay private and quiet. Number four, how bad DX became. D-Generation X were genuinely game-changing when they arrived in the late 90s. They were the official heralds of a new wave of edgier, boundary-pushing content that became the Attitude Era. Shawn Michaels and Triple H were drunken doofus frat boys making jokes about big sausages and showing their bums to people, the scamps. People loved it, but then they came back in 2006 and the shine was very much off the apple. In fact, the shine had been plastered on the apple with paint and it was giving off bad fumes. Almost a a decade later, the two man children were talking about Vince McMahon's cock, doing unfunny skits whilst dressed as Vince and Shane, and dropping poo on the McMahon's heads. Also, they beat up male cheerleaders, one of which was a secret Dolph Ziggler. Need more proof that new DX sucked? They added Hornswoggle, the patron saint of jumping the shark. Vince's illegitimate son, the anonymous Raw general manager, DX. Whenever an idea runs out of steam, just add Hornswoggle to deliver the killing blow. Number three, drugging his wife. Triple H eventually did marry Stephanie McMahon and had incredibly wealthy children who were destined to have strong chins. But their storyline courtship began really, 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 really creepily. Triple H was feuding with Vince McMahon at the time and decided to hit him where it hurts, right in the daughter. Steph was going out with Test and was set to marry him when naughty Triple H showed up with a video of him marrying Steph after having drugged her unconscious and used, no joke, ventriloquism to fool the drive through minister into officiating a wedding between them. Naturally, being married against your will after being poisoned by a man then forcibly kissed by him on national TV before he beats up your dad is quite the turn on for the modern woman because Stephanie fell in love with Triple H and they remain kayfabe married for years. Considering what a power couple they are now on TV, the whole drugging thing is probably best left to history. Number two, the racist feud with Booker T. Well, considering everything that's now happened with Hulk Hogan, this feud is suddenly looking super problematic, proof that maybe WWE wants to be careful when choke slamming stones in glass houses. In the lead up to WrestleMania 19, Booker T was feuding with Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship. Triple H cut a promo on him saying that people like you don't get to be champion and you're here to make people like me laugh. During the feud, he also called him boy and threw money at him before telling him to fetch me a towel. Also, Ric Flair told Booker T to carry his bags. Literally, how can that happen in 2003? In the words of one other African-American champion, damn. When called on this horrendous bollocks, Triple H claimed that it wasn't about race and that people like you meant WCW guys. Sure, like Triple H was in 1994, you mean. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's okay, right? Because Booker T proved Triple H's prejudice wrong and won the title, right? Ha 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 ha! Course he bloody didn't. WWE is a bad company sometimes. Number one, Katie Vick. Of course it's this. Of course it's Triple H romancing a mannequin in a coffin. It will never not be this. For anyone who missed the Kane video, the Katie Vick angle was about Triple H accusing Kane of killing a woman in a car crash and then having sex with her while she was dead. I have never wanted to be on the inside of a writer's room more. To cap off the cavalcade of absolute dick witchery, Triple H put on a Kane mask and went to a funeral home, got in a car Often and made gentle friends with a dummy dress like the aforementioned dead woman. Wow, give that man a company. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and you can even follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.